previously on Van Oaks Props. Well, that's going to do it for this video. In part three, I'll be tackling all of the finishing touches, like adding on foam detail and hard coating, but also the inclusion of a projection effect. But that'll have to wait until next time. Okay, now I know I said this was going to be a three-part series, but after a week of 110 degree temperatures here in Los Angeles, it just wasn't in the cards. So in this video, I'm going to tackle part of the build and get to foam application and hard coating. So let's get to it. With all of the flats built, it's time to start making bricks. And more bricks. And even more bricks. This method can be time consuming, but I wanted the crypt to look like a brick structure with an outer stone face that's broken away over time. So I grabbed a combination of one inch and half inch foam, a box cutter, and got to cutting and applying pieces with white Gorilla Glue. Cutting and gluing individual bricks from one inch foam gives me the ability to give each one its own height and pitch, which helps to tell a bit of a story about this script. I like using the white version of Gorilla Glue because it dries quickly, but also foams up as it dries which helps to create an uneven organic surface. Those changes in elevation should also create shadows under haunt lighting. The larger stone faces were cut from 1 inch foam pieces and were applied to various parts of the wall. It was really important to me that these looked as unintentional as possible, so I made sure to make a variety of shapes and sizes and place them at different parts of the wall, followed by cutting matching brick pieces to help sell the look of a broken section of the crypt. More bricks were applied to the front lower section of the crypt but the top window will be left open. This is where our projection effect will happen. After the crypt is hard coated, painted, and weathered, I'll install a scrim in the opening for my AXA HP3 projector to project its image onto. When everything's finally glued in, it's time to age them. I like using the spray bottle of water and propane torch method, but you could also use a heat gun or just scuff them up with a wire brush and a rasp. After the torch aging was finished, I went back with my box cutter and a rasp to address any areas that needed some special attention, and then it was time to jump into hard coating. For this project, I decided to try some powdered tile mortar that's mixed with water and applied with a brush or a hopper spray gun. It's a bit of a departure from my usual dry lock or monster mud, but I'd heard good things about it and wanted to give it a try. And after coating the crypt, I can say that using the mortar was both a good and bad thing. Considering how hot it was, the mortar was drying relatively quickly, which was good. The bad side, the mortar was drying relatively quickly, so I could only mix up small batches to keep it from hardening in my mixing bucket. So there were frequent stops to mix up more hard coat, which slowed down the entire process. And this was easily the messiest part of the build. But after the coating was dry, it felt fairly rigid, and once painted should last for quite some time. And after all three flats were covered, I was out of steam and had to call it done. For now. And with that, we're in the home stretch of this build. In part 3.5, I'll cover all of the finishing touches, plus the addition of the projector. But that'll have to wait until next time. As always, be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already, but most importantly, go make something.